The Chargers will head to Pittsburgh this weekend with a trip to the AFC Championship game on the line. San Diego advanced in the playoffs by virtue of Saturday's win against Indianapolis. They face the 12-4 and Steelers at Heinz Field this Sunday. Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger is expected to play after suffering a concussion in Pittsburgh's final regular season game. The Chargers captured the all-important wild card win, but this weekend's matchup against Pittsburgh will be no easy task. Joining us now with what the team has to do to beat the Steelers is the host of the Scott and BR show on Double X 1090 Sports Radio, Billy Ray Smith. Thanks, Bill, for coming in. It's great to be here. So what do we have to do in a nutshell to uh, get by this weekend's game coming up? Uh, I think basically when you compare it to the, to the last effort against the Steelers, they went back to Heinz Field and they lost the game by a single point, 11 to 10. You make a field goal. Nate Kading missed a field goal in the third quarter. You win that football game. They kept the Steelers out of the end zone and played a great game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They just need this much more. They just need that that one field goal to, to come out on top on the scoreboard. Well, you know that all Charger fans are looking at LT, and so we're not sure what will happen with him right. Sunday. He got taken out last week as well. Sproles was very effective in the last game. Mm -hmm. Potentially against this Pittsburgh defense, can Sproles be just as effective? Uh, best defense in the National Football League, but Darren Sproles is going to be effective against any defense he goes against. The, the kid, he, he's not <laughs> obviously the biggest player in the league. He's only 5'6", but I got to tell you, the guy played Division I football. He played at Kansas State, and he has the sixth most offensive yards, total offensive yards, in NCAA history. The guy is a producer, and, and I got to be honest with you, as a linebacker, when you engage with a 6'6 six six offensive lineman and you're trying to find a guy that's 5'6 hiding behind him, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible, and, and it's, uh, it's going to be the ruin of many a linebacker before he retires out of this league. Well, that's great. Yeah. I had just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, but Roethlisberger suffered the concussion back in their regular season. Now, he had a week off, but right. what does that mean as he heads into this weekend? Well, he'll be somewhat confused when he gets out there, and uh, <laughs> uh, that's you know, good head injuries for the opposing quarterback is never a bad thing, but Ben <laughs> Roethlisberger, quite frankly, I mean, he's one of the better quarterbacks, but I'll, I will tell you that Phillip Rivers has had a much better year than Ben Roethlisberger. Statistically speaking, Phillip Rivers uh, in the top one or two in almost every category uh, as far as throwing the football, and he's been a great leader for this Charger offense. Uh, I think you, you, you want to go to head-to-head. -head. I'll, I'll take uh, Phillip Rivers over Ben Roethlisberger any time. And I know that uh, the Saturday's game where we found success has already been talked about for a couple of days, but at the same time, taking a look at what we did successfully Saturday night, what are maybe some of the points that we could take forward if we can find the success mm -hmm. over Pittsburgh this weekend that would be very important, some of those points? Well, I think avoiding turnovers is a big key. Uh, Phillip had a, a really bad day back in Pittsburgh, had a 44.4 passer rating, and that's one of his lowest numbers of the year. The guy's normally in the triple digits. He also had two interceptions. That's something you don't normally see Phillip Rivers do in a game, throw two interceptions. The guy's only had an inter one interception in the the last six games uh, going into the playoffs and against the Colts and and just just the fact that you upset the Indianapolis Colts and you beat the MVP Peyton Manning I think gives this Charger team a great deal of confidence the only thing that I regret is that the great Charger fans aren't going to be able to make it to Heinz Field and support the team the way they did at Qualcomm that was the that was the actual heart of, of a home field advantage the Charger fans were fantastic well, that's a good point so for all those fans they, they look for the rallies mm -hmm. uh, Scott and BR often has a Friday morning do we have another rally we do that? we're going to be at the house of blues and we're going to do it just like we always do it we're going to pretty much Great. open the doors at 5 45 in the morning and and just uh you know throw a party and and back our team that'll give us a place to go beautiful Ray Smith thank you for I'll your see expertise. you there Carol you better make you better make she'll it she'll be with me done excellent